the castle church, Wittenberg, northern Germany. Martin Luther has nailed one document to its door. The 95 Theses, 95 stinging attacks on the mighty Catholic Church. And its head, the Pope. Luther has no idea that with this one gesture, he has unleashed a hurricane. A storm of violence that will rage across Europe. Change the face of Western civilization forever. And sweep him towards an epic confrontation with the greatest powers of the day. God knows, I never thought of going so far as I did. I would never have thought that such a storm would rise from Rome over one simple scrap of paper. Luther had never intended for his 95 theses to create the tumult they did. But in Rome, the headquarters of the Catholic Church, they caused outrage and horror. Not just because they criticized the Pope, but also because they were massively popular. The theses touch a nerve for several reasons. Issues of moment to a large number of people of the time about uh, the church and its relationship in the economy, what is salvation, what do people have to do to be saved. And it's that combination in a time when people were really resenting the way in which the church was taking advantage of that desire to be saved. All that came together and made these something that people talked about. But the church had a name for works like this. They were heresy. And heresy called for a swift response. The first victims were Luther's books. And the next would be Luther himself. The ultimate punishment for a heretic was that they could be cut off from the church and handed over to lay justice, which would sentence them to death in a rather hypocritical phrase that they used, without the shedding of blood, which usually meant burning or drowning. Only a hundred years before, a man named Hus had criticized the church for much the same reasons as Luther. Hus was promised a safe hearing, only to then be roasted alive. The papacy can crush, That's, there's no two ways about it. It's an amazingly efficient machine for detection of error through the Inquisition, for example, and through the elimination of individuals. We have to say that Luther has entered an arena of extremely high gladiatorial risk uh, with, a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a strong possibility of execution.
For Martin Luther, the mounting fury of the Catholic Church would inspire not doubt and fear, but an extraordinary courage that would only grow stronger with every attack he faced. There's no doubt that Luther is frightened by some of the threats that are made against him. But alongside this is this very strong idea that if the Christian life is being lived authentically, then you must expect to suffer. Luther sees the criticism of him almost as a confirmation of his vocation as a reformer. Martin Luther continues right on because he's a man of both high idealism, resolve, and naivete. One has to admire that kind of single-minded pursuit of an ideal. Luther squared up to the church with a style of opposition it had never encountered before. He was utterly dismissive of its threats. The Pope demanded that Luther disown the 95 Theses. Luther refused. The Pope sent a cardinal to interrogate him. Luther was unimpressed. He is no more fitted to handle the case than an ass to play on a harp. And then Luther was charged with heresy. He remained defiant. I demand they show me absolutely, not respectively, distinctly and not confusedly, certainly and not probably, just what is heretical. I think the difficulty the church faced was this. The more it tried to silence Luther, the greater Luther became convinced that he had a vocation which needed to be seen through. I desired to believe freely and to be a slave to the authority of no one, whether council, university, or pope. And I was bound not only to assert the truth, but to defend it with my blood and death. In Rome, Luther's writings were causing mounting fury. Pope Leo X now turned to the mightiest weapon in his arsenal, excommunication. With this, Leo could condemn Luther to an eternity of hell in the next world and to make him an outcast in this. To the average Christian, Papal excommunication meant that if you died without being reconciled to the church, you spent eternity in hellish torment. The document was drafted at Leo's magnificent hunting lodge outside Rome, and the text reflected the pontiff's favorite leisure pursuit, the stalking of wild boar. Arise, O Lord, protect yourself for a wild boar of the forest is seeking to destroy your vineyard. We must proceed against this Martin Luther to his condemnation and damnation as one whose faith is notoriously suspect and is in fact a true heretic. Sealed with the great papal emblem of the crossed keys of St. Peter, this document should have sealed Luther's fate, not least because it could place him open to arrest by any secular or church authority. But as Leo was raising the stakes in Rome, Luther was discovering that he had a new and powerful weapon on his side. For movements to spread, their ideas need to spread. And for Luther, it was providential that a means of disseminating these ideas had suddenly become available through the printing press. I think in our own day and age, we're very much aware of how much 
Things have been changed by the internet. What the internet is to our day, printing was to Luther's day. It meant the ideas could travel. They could not be stopped. Luther had watched as the printers had spread his 95 theses across Germany. I think that's as far as we'll go today. <laughs> it's now 7.56. I wanted to, can you folks all hear me? Yes. Good, good. I wanted to conclude uh, by, um, <clears throat> by reading from uh, The Desire of Ages. Um, I mean, from the book, The Great Controversy, <clears throat> uh, let me just share a, a little bit with you. This is from page 131. Uh, again, the whole discussion of, of what we've just watched here had been <clears throat> um, the, 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 the conflicts that Luther was going through and the, the imminence of his, of his uh, uh, you know, his arrest, uh, his condemnation by the church, his death as a heretic. Anyway, um, but he just persevered through it all, uh, persevered through it all. And I wanted to end with that little clip about the internet, with, about the printing press, because today we have the internet. Anyway, here's what it says. Though Luther had been moved by the Spirit of God to begin his work, he was not to carry it forward without severe conflicts. The reproaches of his enemies their misrepresentation of his purposes and their unjust and malicious reflections upon his character and motives came in upon him like an overwhelming flood, and they were not without effect. He felt confident that the leaders of the people, both in the church and in the schools, would gladly unite with him in efforts to reform. Words of encouragement from those in high position had inspired him with joy and hope. Already in anticipation, he had seen a brighter day dawning for the church but encouragement had changed to reproach and condemnation. Many dignitaries of both church and state were convinced, uh, were convicted of the untruth, uh, uh, sorry, were convicted of the truthfulness of his thesis. And they soon saw that the acceptance of these truths would involve great changes. To enlighten and reform the people would be virtually to undermine the authority of Rome, to stop thousands of dreams now flowing into her treasury and thus greatly to curtail the extravagance and luxury of the papal leaders. Furthermore, to teach the people to think and act as responsible beings looking to Christ alone for salvation would overthrow the pontiff's throne and eventually destroy their own authority. For this reason, they refused the knowledge tendered them of God and arrayed themselves against Christ and the truth by their opposition. The man who, to the man whom he had sent to enlighten them. <clears throat> a couple more paragraphs. Luther trembled as he looked upon himself, one man opposed to the mightiest powers of earth. He sometimes doubted whether he had indeed been led of God to set himself against the authority of the church. Who was I? This is a quote. Who was I? He writes, to oppose the majesty of the Pope before whom the kings of the earth and the whole world trembled. No one can know what my heart suffered during these first two years and into what despondency, I may say, into what despair I was sunk. But he was not left to become utterly disheartened. When human support failed, he looked to God alone and learned that he could lean in perfect safety upon that all power. And so, folks, can we? So, folks, can we? And whatever it is that we... Uh, whatever challenges we are facing in our daily lives, uh, we can look to Christ and continue to press the throne of grace for his, uh, for his uh, sure answers to the difficulties that we're, we're facing. It doesn't mean to say we won't go through difficulty, but it, it promises that he will be with us in the midst of whatever fiery storms we are facing in life. Anyway, um, hope you're finding all of this to be interesting and inspiring. Two. Any thoughts before we close? Just one question on what page in the Great Controversy was that? This was page 131 and 132. Oh, thank you. And it gets even a little better. The next couple of paragraphs get even better on page okay. 132. So, so, uh, so read. I encourage all of you to get out your Great Controversy and read read uh, these chapter Luther, Luther's separation from Rome. Phenomenal, uh, phenomenal stuff. Isn't this good stuff, folks? 
Yes. I yes. wish more people were joining us for this, but uh, anyway, I'm so glad. And Bonnie, by the way, I hope that uh, I apologize for, for hanging up on you and everyone, but I see you finally got back to us and I'm glad that you're with us, Bonnie. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm all thumbs when it comes to technology, and uh, I got overly uh, nervous, and I clicked and hung up on everyone. And so, anyway, um, I think it's time for us to conclude. Um, uh, it's getting late. Uh, I'm wondering if I could ask my dear wife if she would have a closing prayer for us this evening. Would you pray for us, Lord? Uh, um, by the way, anyone else have anything to say before we close in prayer or questions, or if not. Uh, Okay. It's been good to be with you folks uh, and looking forward. We're going to do part four of this next week, so encourage your friends to come. We're not done yet. Okay. Go ahead, Lori. Thank you. Father in heaven, I want to thank you so much for the witness of people who have walked in the past, who have seen great light and have been inspired by your word and your presence to live far above and beyond what they ever expected they would do in their life. Um, I thank you, Lord, that you give us these stories and uh, things that we can look at and realize that they were just regular people too. And that each of us in our regularness with God becomes something special. So I just pray, Lord, that you would give us that inspiration, that we would realize that with you, all things are possible. And, you know, we, we say it, but Lord, give it that, give us that in our heart, have it burn within us so that we also would be um, close and, and tight with you, Lord, that, it, you know, what we're doing is just you working through us. Thank you so much that you love us so much, that you care for us so much. I pray that you would be with each person represented here tonight and with the prayer requests that they have on their hearts. Um, I pray that you would be with the people, with their health, with their mental health. We have so many uh, people who are struggling with mental health issues, Lord. I just pray that you would be with each one and that they would find their peace and uh, comfort and joy in you, Lord. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah.